Look at that stack of shit, Doug. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Back in the garage tonight. Uh, we're off the Wildcat for a little bit. Get Thank little God. Bit of, I know, right? We're going to do a little bit of uh, YXZ work, actually. So um, a lot of you guys might have noticed I've run uh, dual rate springs in the back of my YXZ for a while. Um, I finally got around to, to buying the front set. So got a hold of Weller Racing. They hooked us up with some dual rate springs that are going to go on the front of the YXZ tonight. Um, so we got some crossover rings here, some sliders, and then uh, we're also going to do sway bar links. So a lot of you guys um, have bent sway bar links. If not, you know it's an issue. The sway bar can shift side to side. The links get on a funny angle. You bend one, kind of messes your ride up. So got some heavy duty links also from Weller. Thanks for Super those. Super beefy, dude. Yeah. Like you see them in photos, you think, okay, not that big of a deal. Right. You don't realize how big they are until you, until you have them in your hand and feel them. So. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, also to go along with those um, clamps for the sway bar. So the stock sway bar has some retaining rings on them. Um, they fail, they move a lot. Like I say, the sway bar shifts, causes the, the links to get bent. So got some Weller Racing clamps, gonna clamp those on there, keep everything smooth. Um, so should be, should be a pretty simple night in the garage. Hoping this is, uh, hoping this is easier than the, than the Wildcat engine. So let's see. Mm. SideBySideBlog.com Garage truck springs dude <laughs> yeah. what are those off of 97 trailblazer 350 i think um so i guess uh, i'll admit i haven't actually had the front shocks off of this thing yet but i'm looking at it how i think it's going to happen is i think we're going to take this hood off with these two screws and then there's going to be a couple screws a couple push pins under here we can kind of pull this piece back so we can get to the upper bolt lower bolts real you know real easy to get that looks like a 14 and a 17 so Again, this should be easy. You're going to want to go ahead and jack the machine up before you take the shock bolts out or attempt to take them out. That'll what? So, I say you just hit it with an impact, dude. That should come right out, no problem. Run them out. I mean, if you do it one at a time, you'll probably get away with it. Front end's so stiff on this thing, bro, that it just holds the other one up. <laughs> right. I think the front on these is actually a little undersprung. I haven't looked at the, I haven't, yeah. I haven't looked at the rates that uh, Weller sent, but... I believe, so the rears are really, really stiff on these. You know, if you own one, you know, right? So those are way oversprung. So the rear is definitely a little softer after the respring. The front supposedly is a little undersprung. So I'm interested in trying it out. Hopefully it balances the machine a little better. I'm hoping it, you know, maybe jumps a little better. Not that it jumps bad right now. The dual rates on the rear were a big help with the bucking, but I'm hoping, you know, the front maybe pops a little better. So Doug Popperfield. We'll see. Yeah, the front end kind of flopped on the uh, Silver Lake jumps like real bad. Like it came down like a like a shitty bike. The front end, yeah, the front end uh, bottomed out a lot easier than uh, than it should have. So, all right, I think you were okay. getting somewhere. So yeah. much for that push pin theory. This ain't you no know, BRP, bro. I was just guessing. So we God, got that's like right in the way of that. one ten there. That's just annoyingly covered by this yellow fender so you know, know what maybe we'll you probably bent this entire front subframe bro i wouldn't be surprised this thing's kind <laughs> your of nose dive <laughs> <laughs> nah it's good she's tough i'm sure that's the way it's supposed to be so after five more seconds of thinking about this we're not going to go unbolting yellow plastic to get at this thing so there might be a need to remove this in the future so i'm just going to go in with a die grinder and buzz this piece of plastic out because you can't see it anyways so dude this is, no this is dumb See how this works. That looks great, man. Yeah, that should work. So now I think we'll be able to. All those little shards in there, bro. Yeah. Now we should just be able to take a nut driver. Look at that. Hell yeah, dude. Much better. You're welcome, Yamaha. If you want to go ahead and integrate that into the 2018 model. 2018 four-seater heard first at sidebysideblog.com. Turbo. What? Oh, you think it'll have a turbo? Maybe. Why do you gotta play like you don't know, Doug? We're supposed to know everything. Maybe we do know everything. Okay, that's not too bad. 
So. So you call it 14. That's not a 17, bro. No, you don't think so? I All think right. that's a 16. Just kidding. Uh -huh. I don't really know. I think it's a 17. Let's see. Dang it. All right, I'll make my bet. Look at these retarded, like, tribal. Ooh. Listen, my grandpa got me those. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, here they are, 16 and 17. All right, guys, use code SIDEBYSIDE blog right now on SIDEBYSIDEBLOG.com to vote. Is it a 16 or a 17? All right, here comes a 16. It's a f oh. 17, dude. It's loose, though. It's a six. It's a 17. You, what'd you say? It's a 17. Six, it's 17? A 17. Listen, if you've worked on Yamaha stuff for this long, you'd know that they've never put a 16 millimeter nutter bolt in anything. Does that even <laughs> so, exist? Does it exist? It's 10, 12, 14, 17, 19, you know. There's no 16. Shut up, dude. I get it. Step one, loosen bolt on upper A-arm mount. Wait, no, crap. Upper shock mount. I mean, you can loosen the upper A-arm if you want. It's not going to feel <laughs> good. <laughs> what if you're a wildcat? Uh, Ease up all that pressure from the bent A-arm. Right, right, right. Real you got important an electronic footage. impact out for this. Yeah, no kidding. Where's Rick when you need him? He's just gone. He's out of the game for good, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't fit in there great. Probably wouldn't recommend a... Ratchet, but you know. Don't you have a ratcheting wrench, like a uh, gear wrench? I do. I'm just gonna go ahead and see if this slips off. Whew, that was close. Didn't slip. Impressive. Oh, Rick, is he gone? I don't know. <laughs> don't tease people, dude. <laughs> he's, he's done. Uh, I heard some rumors, but yeah, I don't know. Never know with that guy. You really don't ever know? I feel like I know on this one, but it's all right. We're slowly integrating 1000cc Seuss as a Rick replacement. I realize he doesn't have the same tenacity and anger. He's on the total opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to anger. Yeah, he doesn't get angry. No. All right, so step two-ish. Yeah, I lost track of the steps we're on. Doesn't really matter. Lift the machine. This will be exciting footage. Yeah, baby. <sighs> Why is these pretty beefy though? I don't know if you guys ever looked at that, but look at that tie rod end. Get my little camera deal out of there. It's freaking beefy, dude. Yeah, I mean, I haven't bent anything on the front end yet. Even the ball joints look huge. I've put the front end into a couple of bad situations, so. Right. Now that shock looks impressive. There it is. I mean, it's a big shock. Yeah. Even the shaft is freaking huge. Yeah, they're beefy. They're beefy. I mean, but, they stick through the hood, they're so big. Yeah, good point. It's the only reason I bought this thing, just because the shocks stick through the hood. So, too bad you got to downgrade to these baby little springs, dude. Right, look how much smaller they are. So the bottom right out so easy. It doesn't actually look that much smaller. Yeah, in diameter. I think it'll look smaller when it's on the shock. Right. Just sticking way out here. Okay, so... What do you do now, bro? Pretty basic, right? There's a retainer, cup, whatever, on the bottom. There's spring pressure on it, so you can't get it off yet. So you got to take your preload nuts. There's two of them. They're jammed together. Unjam the top one, thread the preload nuts up, take the pressure off the spring, then you'll be able to slide this cup out. Spring comes off, and then we'll replace it with a new hardware. So you can see this thing has been ridden, so the threads are all dirty. You know, do yourself a big favor and clean the threads up a little bit first before you, you know, go trying to thread those nuts all the way off the shock body. That'll make your life hard, so. So as our English friends say, do you have the right spanner, mate? Spanner? Spanner wrench, mate. Yeah. I'm gonna clean this first. I will probably throw them in the scrap pile, but. Scrap? I mean, Kids in Africa could have eaten those springs. What are you gonna use these for? <laughs> These things are totally worthless. Everybody and their brothers got a set of freaking stock YXZ springs sitting around. I even have a pair. I don't even have, I just got them for free. Right. There it is. Got the threads up here cleaned up a little bit. It's got these little plastic covers on the top of the shock. I pop that off. Just put it in the vise with some rubber jaws so it doesn't get all scratched up. Throw a rag or something in there. If you don't got rubber jaws, 
You got rubber jaws? Find them on Amazon. No. Rubber jaws. That one's not gonna work. Spanner mate. Ooh, there's your rebound, Doug. Yeah, that's that is what that is. So just loosen the jam nut first. Started to go. Yep. So what do you do now? What we're gonna do is just take a large screwdriver. Oh no. I'm gonna have my brother come over here. Oh god. Right. Gonna ruin the finish, dude. I don't really care. And he's go up on that top one. So it's a two-man op right now. Yep. Go ahead. Booyah. There we go. Okay, good, thanks. Still hear a little dirt in there. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Even with the clean thread, still sounds like monkey poop. Holy frickin' preload, Batman. Yeah. Come off. There's quite a bit left. We're gonna end up touching that other one. For those of you still watching, <laughs> Doug has not actually taken the preload off the spring yet. <laughs> we don't want this to be like one of those shows on TV where they just, you know, have a 30 second commercial break. You come back and they've done two and a half weeks worth of work. Right. You know? Well, we don't actually have commercial breaks because I don't allow the in video ads because that's annoying. And I'm probably losing out on a bunch of money not doing that. I think everyone appreciates that. So you're welcome, fans of Side by Side Blog. We haven't totally sold out yet. Oh, oh there go. finally. You can tell by the amount of dirt that's flying everywhere. So just get yourself some space. Push the bump stop down. That's got a cutout on it, right? So just twisty poo. Slide that out of there. You should let that fucker twang, dude. I don't really I'm, want it to twang into the Just side twang of the it, bro. Or my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as bad as I thought it might have been. Why don't you run without without springs? Annoying though. You save a lot of weight, probably. Oh, good call. That's why I keep you around. And this could be your spring. <sighs> BASF seven. Wow, BASF for real? Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Didn't know they're in the elastomer game. Now you know. Okay, so um, we're going to take a few minutes to really clean these threads up good. Because like I say, these got to come all the way off. And then we got, you know, um, or actually we're going to reuse the, I'm sorry, we're going to reuse the nuts. So we're just going to put the crossover rings on. But crossover rings got to thread all the way down this. Um, so we're going to clean the threads up real good. This little shock guard here, not exactly sure, you know, what they what they call that thing. I assume it's just to keep the spring from... Rubbing on the shock. I don't know why when your spring's this big around, but that's got to come off because we got a shock slider, a spring slider that's going to go on there. So, all right, everybody. Ooh. So there you go. That's off. Garbage. Look at we didn't even really scratch things up. Dang, dude. Hella that's clean. Good. Okay, so now we're going to clean. It's like Plinko. So these are the beautiful instructions sent from Weller. Yep. So what does it say? Okay, so, um, you know, basically reverse of what you just did, right? Except you got a couple new components here. You got a couple crossover rings. These are two threaded nuts that are gonna go on. So these are gonna go on first. Once you do that, you're gonna drop your tender spring on. So the shock is upside down. Typically you see these on top. So this is your soft spring, right? Gives you that nice ride through the little chatter. Um, after that, your spring slider is going to go on, and then after your spring slider, your main spring, put your retainer back in, tighten your preload, and you're good to go. So, first step is our crossover rings. Um, yep, so this is the stock stuff, stock uh, preload nuts, a little washer there. I'm going to put a little W40 on the threads, hopefully make this go a little easier because these things have to thread down a long ways. William Defoe, 40th edition. 
So let's take a look before we go too far. Okay. Um, so there's a couple settings here. Weller gives you this. Where's Super Huck setting? Super Huck setting is probably going to be um, basically, you know, your desert setting. And then uh, we'll go over the settings. So I don't know, maybe run the crossovers right down to the main springs on instantly. And then uh, for Super Huck. Right. Okay. Anyways, so. Um, if you choose to go with Weller, they provide you with some instructions, right? Have some simple measurements for where you set both your preloads once you have the springs on and your crossover ring. So the crossover is going to set the point in the travel where you transition from your soft tender spring into your stiffer main spring. So hence the word crossover. Exactly. So you can adjust that based on your liking. It's pretty pretty simple, but um, so we went with the desert kit as opposed to the short course kit. So the short course kit is going to be you know. Lower ride, right? Short course type ride. Desert kit's gonna be a little, up, you know, higher ride height. Um, you know, more focused on ride quality. So, front preload setting, desert five inch is from this surface to the preload nuts. We don't have to worry about that yet. What we do need to worry about is the front crossover setting. So, five and a quarter inches from this surface to the bottom of the crossover. So we'll grab a. How long? Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Oh, I mean, oh, you got just, something better? Just put that away. <laughs> oh. So, we're about six. We have a ways to go. That's actually, that's really close right there. So, you yep. squared up with that. Oh, All right. Of course. Okay, so now we're going to run our second one down. This is pretty complicated. You guys might want to pay close attention. Just a lot of finger, finger spinning. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start at their recommended setting for the crossover, because that's what I did on the rear, and that worked real well, so... Grab your spanner wrenches or screwdrivers or whatever you have and just uh, hopefully with these beautiful parts you're going to use proper spanner wrenches. Right. If you got them, that would be preferred. Span them if you got them. I'm just going to... Okay, so now... Tender render springer. Tender spring, so you know these things got some letters printed on them. If uh, you're OCD like I am, you, you know, can put them on so they face up doesn't really matter and then the slider is gonna go is that how the slider goes should be I think double check yeah yeah main spring another lettering scenario another here lettering scenario you can even line them up if you want okay Gives you a little bit of room. Move our bump stop down out of the way. Oh shoot, I gotta clean this. So, put this in the right way, which is like this. Okay, there it is. So when we run our preload up, that will seat just like that. Pay a little bit of attention, all right? It's easy to get it off like that, so make sure it's seated on the, on the shock end properly. Killer. And we're gonna go to Five inch on the preload, so that is to the top of the spring. So five inches to there. Well, if there to there was five and a quarter, you're putting a lot of a lot of preload in there. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, that's what the instructions say. So that's what we're gonna do. Preload life. You know, there's quite a few options out there for YXZ performance parts. Certainly, there's you know a few solid options out there for YXZ spring kits and shock work, but. If you follow the forums, if you pay attention at all, you know that Weller uh, knows their stuff. They win a lot of races, you know, that kind of speaks for itself, I feel like. So great customer service, very friendly people to deal with. So that's uh, good enough for me. And they gave you a free shirt, Doug. Yeah, this is a great shirt, too. Cleaning, eh? Doing a little more cleaning, you know. So I kind of want to bring up the uh, elephant in the room here. Sorry to interrupt you mid-sentence there, but this oh. thing's been staring at me all night. Yeah, man. What do we got here? New welder. Picked up a new welder for the garage. So decided it was probably time to upgrade the old Harbor Freight unit. That thing's been around for, oh my gosh, I don't even know. No less than 15 years, probably. Um, hasn't been that long? Yeah, it's been a long time. Anyways, done a ton of welding with it. It still works fine, but we're getting into uh, more and more legitimate fab work, and I'm getting tired of... Uh, you know, grinding to make things look nice. So, picked up a little nicer unit. 
She looks good. Got the aluminum spool gun with it as well. Yep, yep, yep. Can I get a hell yeah? With hell that? yeah. Hell yeah. That? Feed it in. Ooh, they look tough. There you go, man. For the most part, grab the bolt. Nice. At the very least, at least I'll have matching springs on the front and back. We'll be running giant white springs on the front and gray ones on the back, so that's cool. All right, now I just gotta do the whole other one. So, springs are done. Took a little bit longer than the allotted 20 minutes we figured it would take, but uh, we didn't make you guys watch the second set. So, we're gonna move on. We're gonna throw the sway bar leaks on. So, we showed you these a little earlier. These beefy. beefy little guys. Won't have to worry about bending those. And we got a couple of these collars that are going on. Uh, make sure our sway bar stays centered. So, the way these things work, Really simple, right? You can kind of see what's going on here. On the inside of the sway bar, there's a couple factory uh, factory clamps, um, and they just they tend to have issues, right? They break, they slide, they move, they don't do a good job holding the sway bar centered. So these come in and actually just back them up. So you're gonna install them in the center of the sway bar, slide them out against the factory collars, tighten them down, and uh, you're good to go. So both of these are gonna go on from the driver's side and then slide over. So if we take a look at the other side, there's really no space to get this in there. So install it loosely, slide it across, tighten it up once it's over there. Um, that's basically it. Weller says put some Loctite on these, which makes sense. It's all aluminum. I'll probably use a little blue. Should be good. Simple, right? All right, you got the little collars installed. The collars are on. The one on the uh, passenger side is actually a bit of a pain. If you're doing it from up top, I got it, but you might want to drop the skid plate, makes tightening up screws a lot easier. If Doug can do it, it doesn't mean anybody can do it. So go ahead and consult your local Doug or use code side by side blog at Harbor Freight to get your 0% discount on all Dougs. So this is all pretty self explanatory, right? Sorry guys, this is boring. We're taking the stock swing arm links off, not swing arm links, sway bar links, sorry. Um, you can see this one right here, right? So you got, what is that, a 19 uh, millimeter nut on the back side. And then on the stud, there's a couple flats. That's a 17 mil. So if you have 17 millimeter wrench, you can just slide it in there. Get a nice view of your arm, dude. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that elbow movement. Man, what are you doing with this exhaust, dude? We're gonna get that thing out of here soon. We got a pretty cool exhaust coming for this thing, so I don't know if I want to let the secret out yet, but you guys might shit a brick. That's what I'm trying to say. Literally, and it's not literally. It's right? still just a regular exhaust, no turbo attached to it. But sorry. So I don't know. Stock links are in pretty decent shape. They're they not look bent pretty good. Yep, they're pretty tight. But how can we utilize those on the Wildcat? It's gonna be sweet, dude. Sorry, I'm just gonna do something like this. Oh, you know what? Actually, so these links are a little bit longer. It means it's gonna rotate your sway bar up a little bit. That's not a big deal. Doesn't actually change the way it works. Um, but in order to do that, we're gonna have to go to the other side and loosen the other link, so. Amateur hour supreme. All right. We're not gonna cut it, though. Why not, Doug? Why wouldn't we cut that? That would be something that some other YouTube channels might do. Not even YouTube channels, maybe people featured on such channels as Outdoor Life Network. Rhymes with Snurt Dax <laughs> or Jerk Facts <laughs> or Dirt Backs. Was that almost racial? Dirt A back. Dirt Back? A dirt back. <laughs> that just would describe a hard worker. That's a dirt back. Don't, All be, right. don't be weird about it, YouTube. Anyway. Just, right, just everybody relax. This one's gonna be a little tricky, maybe? You should say it again. Just drop that spacer a couple times. Pretty self-explanatory. Say it again. <laughs> Give me one more, Doug. Pretty self-explanatory. This just goes uh, where the old one did, so you can put it in however you want. We're gonna put it in so the you know, let me, let me get a full zoom on that. Out. Oh, yeah, dude. So here we go. We should have had Corey sign him. Look at that. We should also tell the fans that Doug didn't buy those. 
No, that's true. These are uh, sponsorship item from from Weller. So, thanks guys for the for the help. We certainly appreciate it. Looking forward to running your stuff and. I mean, that's not going to bend. So No, he did buy the springs, though. Yeah, I mean, I spent a little bit of money on this thing. I'm not always just begging for free parts. Look at that technique on the application. There it is. It's officially a Weller Racing Edition. So we got our springs on the front. We got our springs on the back. We got some Weller sway bar links back here. We got some Weller sway bar clamps. So hopefully added a little comfort. A little durability. Hell yeah. Testing them in uh, Glamis here in a few short weeks. So, looking forward to it. Nice parts. Like them a lot. So, can't go wrong with these guys. Man, they're well known, obviously. Winning a lot of races. Quality parts. Good people. So, do it.